What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back, Birds, Beers, and BS here on the AT Sports Network. Let's get this shit show going. Attention, listeners. Between the head coach and the GM, because no one knew how he's vision. No, how he's a freaking moron. <laughs> and there's a reason why how Jeffrey you got a moron. Are you gonna let me freaking talk? <laughs> God damn, bro. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, and you know what that means. It is another episode of Birds, Beers, and BS on the AAT Sports Network. We are powered by our friends at Vinny's Pizza and Restaurant. Vinny's Pizza is located off the Iroquois Trail in the Old Town Shopping Center in Allentown. They are open Monday through Saturday, serving you their delicious Italian cuisine that includes pizza, pasta, sandwiches, and more. Make sure to check out their daily and game day specials today. Sports are back. We're in the thick of things. Football is here. We're now in the baseball playoffs. Hockey and basketball are back. So make sure you have some great food uh, for all your sports parties that you are hosting. Oh yeah, uh, They are available for pickup or delivery. So order today by calling mm-hmm. 610-395-2300 or visiting Vinny'sPizzaPA.com. Again, 610-395-2300. Uh, or visit Vinny's PA, Pizza PA.com. Tell Vinny and Caesar that the Birds, Beers, and BS crew sent you. They'll treat you like family, some great food. So make sure to support our sponsors. Uh, it really helps us out. Uh, we are your typical co hosts, uh, myself, Eagle Jeff Warner, alongside Pina, or whoever the hell he wants to go by this week. Geraldo. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever geraldo i don't even care anymore Minshew. <laughs> i do not even care anymore a lot to get into we haven't been oh, yeah. here for a couple weeks so uh, a couple games the eagles have had over the last couple weeks we'll dissect and dive in and give you our thoughts on that matter in just a moment away also just today an mm. eagles favorite was traded away we'll give you those uh, trade details and also let you know our thoughts on the matter but uh, of course, a tough, tough loss for our Philadelphia Eagles oh, yeah. last night. They, they played a lot better than I expected, but they go down to Brady and the Bucks at home 28 to 22 as they now fall to two and four on the season after a huge fourth quarter victory. You thought they might have a little bit of momentum with the short week after beating the Carolina Panthers this past Sunday. They do drop to Brady and the Bucks and mm-hmm. Geraldo Pina, whatever the hell you want to be called. Geraldo, what, are, what are your thoughts on what happened and uh, what, what was the reasoning behind the Eagles lackluster performance on Thursday night? Three things, man. Play calling, play calling and quarterback play. <laughs> I got to say, man, I just got to say, I just I, I've seen this quarterback so far this year. And uh, I got to tell you, there's some things I don't like about him. Uh, the accuracy is not there. Uh, some of the balls are overthrown, underthrown. The play calling is horrendous. I mean, Nick Sirianni, what, what, what I don't what are we doing here? We don't run the ball effectively when we try to run the ball. We can't run the ball. Uh, it's it's all around coaching and quarterback play. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, look, the, through the first six games, I understand, and we keep on bringing it up on all our programs here on the AT Sports Network, is that, look, Sirianni's a rookie head coach. Mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts, he's a young, inexperienced quarterback that's still trying to find his groove. Mm-hmm. But we are now six games into the season, and it got brought up today in the post-game uh, press, the day after press conference with Nick Sirianni is, what is the identity of this Eagles f- uh, football team at this current moment? What is the identity of... Of our offense. And right now, we we don't have one. And it's kind of concerning that even your head coach comes out and says today that they don't have one. That He he doesn't know what their identity is, but he's not too concerned about that. (laughs) I I don't understand how you could not be concerned about that. You are now two and four. You have allowed – you're the worst rush defense in the National Football League defensively. Offensively, 
You don't utilize one of your best offensive weapons with Miles Sanders. He had oh, yeah. one carry, one carry through the first half of that football game last night. Mm-hmm. I think he had a total of four or five carries on, 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 on Sunday against the Carolina Panthers. Mm. Basically, if you're a gambling man and the over under on Miles Sanders, Miles Sanders carries is like between eight and ten, always take the under. <laughs> Because right now, Nick Sirianni, I don't know what the hell he thinks he's doing. And look, I don't think he knows what the hell he's doing. <laughs> and look, yesterday's game plan, I understand why they didn't run the football as much. Because, look, the Buccaneers are a stout uh, defense when it comes to uh, to their run defense. That front seven, mm-hmm. with uh, even with Levante David out, they still have Devin White. Uh, I think they still have Gerald McCoy. I can't remember who else they have along that defense. But they're no joke. Their no. secondary is the weakness, and and that's the thing. Nick Sirianni keeps on saying that our game plan is attack opponents' weaknesses, which I get. The last two weeks, they've gone against defenses that are not great against the pass. So, of course, you're going to go pass happy. You're, you're going to go uh, 40, 50 passes to Jalen Hurts. You still have to keep opponent de- opposing defenses honest. Absolutely, you ca- you cannot go into a game plan and become one dimensional. You and, and even if you're not running the ball, and you yeah, it might work one week with the bubble screen, mm. but after some time, a defenses know how to do in game adjustments and they pick up on it and they learn how to stiff it out. Oh, yeah. And the fact that look, take. The RPO out of the fucking play call. Yeah. Don't even have it on your sheet. Don't even have Jalen Hurts run it because mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, the defense knows mm-hmm. he is not going to hand it off to Miles Sanders. So why do we even have to – or Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah. Why do you even have to focus on your running backs when you know when it comes to the RPO, Jalen Hurts is either running or throwing the ball. So, of course, yeah. you spy him. You you, you you do man-to-man coverage, shut them down, and get pressure on the quarterback, which Andre Dillard yesterday, he's played well for the most part this season. But yesterday, he, he was getting manhandled. Look, oh, yeah. this whole offense is a complete joke right now. Absolutely agree. And, by the way, it's actually me, Pina. I thought it was Geraldo. I'm not Geraldo. Yeah, they got <laughs> – besides the bubble screens – um. <sighs> the the lack of running, um, I mean, there's so many there's so many holes to poke in this offense, and it's and typically what we usually do is we say, oh, the offensive line play, but to be honest with you, they played fairly well yesterday for what they were asked to do. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. There is no identity to this offense. There's no identity. Period. Even the defense. I mean, defense looks stout one week, and then the next week they get blown blown away. I, the, I don't get it. The the issues with the defense side of the ball, I kind of get. And look, everyone wants to rip rip apart Jonathan Gannon. They're on the field way too much. Well, they're on the field. And also, look, they don't have the personnel to run his defense efficiently. Everyone's wondering, where is the different blitz packages? Why are they playing more press man-to-man when yeah. you have Darius Slate and Steven Nelson, one of the be- uh, two of the best press coverage uh, line- or uh, cornerbacks in the National Football League? Yeah. The reasoning behind that, I truly believe, is he does not have faith in his personnel. The Eagles are – when it comes to man-to-man coverage, you need to get pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, you're, n- you're not getting pressure. So you can't these, – these corners, they can't stick with these rece- speedy receivers as long as you think they can. Yeah. And the fact that you're if you're going to do cover two man-to-man, you need to have safety play over the top. And I do not believe that he trusts his safeties at this moment. Anthony Harris – yeah, he can be a ball hawk, but he's a guy that can be exposed in coverage. Yeah. Rodney McLeod is still trying to get find his groove and get in the thick of things. Right. And honestly, he's not the greatest coverage uh, safety in the NFL. He's more no. he's more that hybrid player, a guy that you can bring up to the line of scrimmage a little bit more right. and bring on a blitz or a play against the run. Kayvon Walls, he, he's Kayvon Walls. He, he's a fifth-round pick for a reason. Yeah. He, he's banged up, but yeah. I'm saying for him over the course of the season. Mm-hmm. So I truly believe that Jonathan Gannon – he, you're not seeing the best out of his game plan because he, he doesn't have the personnel. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to risk his defense getting exposed. Yeah. The fact that last week he openly came out and said, "Sorry, yeah, last week uh, before the Carolina Panthers game." The fact that he openly came out and said that he does not have a dime package in his defensive scheme or his game plan, mm. and that's the reason why they have a linebacker on the quickest wide receiver in the National Football League with Tyree Kill, and you thought and you saw how that went. Yeah. You basically just allowed the NFL any team any team that plays against you to go to go in four uh, four wide receiver sets and expose your linebacker because you apparently do 
not have a dime set defense. No, why, why does he not have – because he doesn't have the personnel for it? I think well, he doesn't have the personnel. Wow. We, we, we're not that deep at corners. Zach yeah. McPherson, he has only been getting on the field. Avante Maddox, he actually has been looking good yeah. a, as a slot corner. But I think the fact that they feel that uh, Zach can't play inside, at least as the fourth corner, or go or go up against some of these tight ends. So but even that, even that would be better than what the linebackers are doing. Excuse me, that was one for the nation. Yeah, I, it, the linebacker plays so horrendous. Why not? Like, get, throw those guys in there. They do probably do a lot better than what these guys have been doing. And you're right, man. Let's see. Right when the season started, they, they, they touted this. They, they touted this coach as someone that could work with, basically work around his players. He can fit players into a scheme. Or I'm sorry, scheme with his players, and and we well, haven't seen that yet. Well, that well, that's more Sirianni. Yeah, I, that, that's more the yeah. you, you expect with the offense side of football. Uh, Jonathan Gannon how, has always ran a certain style defense, and I think him openly saying that it was somewhat of a shot at his players, not his players. At management, not getting him the correct personnel. They want uh, this team to win. I kind of feel it's op- he was taking a shot and trying to open up management's eyes with Howie and Jeffrey. Uh, letting them know, hey, you want me to succeed? Give me players I can work with. I only can work with so much. Nothing against the players I have. They just but don't fit the scheme. They don't fit the scheme, and they're not. A lot of these guys, they're not. NFL, they're not NFL quality players. No. Eric Wilson last night, he was a guy that we expected to have a major impact on our linebacking core. Yeah. He got, I believe, less playing time last night for Davion Taylor. Yeah. So yeah. that ju- that just shows you how much how much faith they have in Eric Wilson, and also that they're trying to evaluate and see what they have in Davion Taylor. Yeah, because the fact of the matter is, most of this defense that we have, they're going to be gone after this year, regardless of what happens. Just for the fact that a lot of these guys are on one year deals. You bring right. in Eric Wilson, you bring in uh, An- you bring in Anthony Harris, right? Uh, you Derek Barnett on a- is on the final year of his contract. Yeah, uh, Fletcher Cox might be difficult to move, but he's one of those rumored players that they might be able to move uh, before the trade deadline this year or in the offseason, right. depending on what position they are in. So, obviously, I'm, I'm not so much worried about this defense. I feel long-term, with the amount of picks that we have, I feel that we can address and try to fix this defense over the next couple off seasons. So you think they address the defense with those picks? I believe so. I'm truly worried about this offense, though. Yeah, so that's what exactly. That's a good point. I, I'm worried about this offense. I'm worried about... Nick Sirianni and his leadership and his and his ability to run this run this team and he was yeah. and it was brought up today he was asked about with the offensive struggles if they if he's willing or possibly give up his, give play, up his calling, play calling play calling duties so he can focus more on Jalen Hurts focus more on the team focus on more evaluation of this mm-hmm. team instead of trying to game plan mm-hmm. and he's being stubborn and saying I am not giving it up essentially. I can't remember his exact quote, but it came down to a summary that <clears throat> I am not willing to give this up. Basically, fuck you. I'm staying here. <laughs> I mean, look, it's not good if you have to give up the play calling in the first year. You know, I can't blame the guy. Well, I yeah, it's year one. You know what I mean? But he, he's having too much on his plate. He's obviously struggling. He's obviously yeah. way too uh, too much over and over his head right now. Yeah. It's yeah. going, and he is obviously struggling with with the in game adjustments. The fact that he's not realizing and recognizing that the RPO is not working, the bubble screens are not working, not utilizing Miles Sanders earlier in the game plan and earlier in the game yeah. is not working. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely fucking loopy right. And, and 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 ultimately, this blame right now for the Eagles' struggles this season, Sirianni. Sirianni, but it ultimately comes and comes at an expense and blame to management with Jeffrey and Howie for allowing this to happen. Yeah. Nothing against Sirianni, but there's a reason why he wasn't scouted or brought up in a lot of these open coaching uh, interviews. Yeah. And he basically came out left field and we brought him in as our coach. What if he's just running exactly what Howie and and uh, Jeff want? You know what I'm saying? That's Maybe thing. that's the problem. You know what I'm saying? Jeff's in his office like, I want more RPOs. It's like, sure thing, boss. Sure thing, boss. Hey, those bubble screens look pretty nice. You know what? We'll do like 30 of them a game. Let's not run the ball. <laughs> that and then one week they're, they're doing the bubble screens. The another week they're just throwing random deep passes yeah. to, to try to focus too much on Devontae Smith. Which hurts cannot. I'm sorry. 
Well, that arm is questionable, and, man. And, and, and that's the thing. Look, after six games, we're now a third through the start of the season. And, you can evaluate now. And you can evaluate a little bit. I still you want to see a little bit more. Right. But the thing is, is Jalen Hurts the guy? No, at I don't this, think so. At this point, have we seen enough of him to really – Look, have I, faith in him for the future of this franchise. Look, sometimes you can question decision making. Sometimes you can question all kinds of things. But phys- physical talent wise, the guy is inaccurate. I mean, some of those there's 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 so many plays that were left on the field due to overthrown balls, balls that weren't there on time, and his deep ball is tr- tragically horrendous. Man, he's oh he's, he's <laughs> he has guys open down the field, and if he would just lay it where it's supposed to be, it'd be a score. It, it, he doesn't throw on a run well. It, there's just look, I love the guy's determination. I love Jalen Hurts as as a, as a player a quarterback but i just don't think he's the guy he's really he's not the guy he's tim tebow ish <laughs> that was brought to you by heineken <laughs> look he was 12 of 26 115 yards one touchdown and interception sacked twice for a quarterback rating of 55.7 that is not a stat line you do not want to see from your starting quarterback hell or no hell even your franchise quarterback or starting quarterback right Look, Jalen Hurts. He's Gaka. He's had his moments. Look, that fourth quarter drive yeah, yeah. A, a, against the Carolina Panthers, the fact that they were able to get that two point conversion for the win. Right. Uh, or for the tie. I can't, remember, I can't remember the exact what happened in that game, but the fact the fact that he was able to, his leadership qualities, his leadership qualities, I, I do not Stellar. doubt. Stellar. Fantastic. When it comes to his, his ability to run this offense and expect production from him, it. It hasn't been there. No. And and a lot of it, I'll say, I don't think it's so much that he can't do it. I feel he's sloppy. You look, you look at these plays. You you look you look at the all 22 film, and there's a lot of breakdown online. Right. You see his mechanics, you see the way his hips are, you see the way his feet are, you see the way he releases the ball. Yeah. A lot of that is development and, and, and his mechanics. And who's the blame for that? Yeah, Jalen Hurts is the blame, but where's the coaching? Where's Sirianni, a guy that's supposedly supposed to be this court, a former quarterback coach and this offensive wizard? Where is our quarterback coach to teach him and look at this game tape and show him what he's doing wrong? I, I assume that that's what they're doing. You would and have if, to. And, yeah. and if that's the case, if they are trying to show him and like point out his flaws right. or him trying to fix this in practice, then Jalen Hurts is just being stubborn yes. and lazy when it comes to his style gameplay. And you could see on a lot of these plays – that the wide receivers are getting open. Yeah. He's a one-two read guy. He's not a guy that's going through his reads. He's not going through his progressions to find the open guy. He, you can see him in the pocket. He moves around way too much, and he, you can see he wants the jolt. He yeah. wants to burst off and try to run. Which, yeah. in some circumstances, okay, but you need. It seems gonna, like almost every play. Though. This, this, this <laughs> is not exactly. This is not college. Yeah. And if you're gonna run the RPO. You have to realize in certain situations and, read the, hand the ball and re, yeah, read the defense is better yeah. where you can give Miles Sanders the ball. Don't keep yeah. on tucking it back every single time because that d- basically turns your offense one dimensional. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And he's going to be injury prone if he keeps doing shit like that. But yeah, for sure. Like, he, he, look, I I don't question his, his leadership skills. He's, he's a smart guy. Um, on and off the field, a great guy. But to be honest with you, like, the, the the it's just not there. He, he doesn't have the it factor. Like I was watching the game and I'm looking at Tom Brady, a, a, not a mobile quarterback at all. This guy moves in the pocket though, so that he's his eyes are always downfield. So as as he's moving, he's looking one, two, three. Jalen, as soon as that pocket starts to collapse a little bit, he doesn't have that presence of mind to just move out to the side because once he moves, he runs. And that's that's where all, a lot of his problems well, lie. Well, there's been sometimes he has moved out outside the pocket. And he's been, he's mobile to try to extend plays. When they but, boot him, but he's not very accurate on the run. He has Hell a, no. at least deep balls. He he's, yeah. he's had a couple plays where he's hit his wide receivers. That one big play, the Earth on a big third down, um, uh, rolling to the right. Yeah. He did make some plays, so uh, I have to give him credit for that. But overall. He just doesn't have it. No, and, no, he doesn't. And you Sorry. can't you can't blame the personnel around him. I understand the offensive line has been an issue, but for the most part, they, with the amount of uh, talent they have on that roster, yeah, uh, on that front five, 
They've been playing pretty well overall. Andre Diller, besides last night, he hasn't been a bad left tackle as they moved my lot the right tackle right to tackle. fill in for Lane, yep. who's dealing with personal issues. So you can't blame the offensive no. line. Everyone wants to blame the personnel. The personnel ain't the issue. A lot of these times, these guys are getting open. It just comes down to Jalen Hurts reading the defense and trying – I kind of feel he he's trying too much, yeah. and they're putting too much pressure on him by to making be, him throw that much to, to be the guy and try to make plays, which is why Sirianni, as the head, as the head coach, needs to recognize that. Yeah, he needs to know his what his what's not working for Jalen Hurts and try to shore up those weaknesses and take that pressure off of Jalen. And I understand the franchise; they want him to be the guy. They want they want to build around him, so they don't have to worry about wasting a first round pick or. Or a high draft pick next year, which I think we're well, going to. I don't think we are. I think Jalen is going to be the guy next year, regardless what happens this year. Just for the plain fact, mm. there is no quality first round quarterback going to next year's draft. At least a high first round quarterback. Right. Of course, there's going to be player teams that are going to reach on the QBs well, because yeah. it's a premier position. There's plenty like Christian Ponder got drafted in the first round one year. Yeah. Jalen Hurts was a high second round pick because there's only a lot of these teams and scouts. They don't want to risk missing on the quarterback. They want to miss risking, um, risk missing on the next guy. So yeah. a lot of these times they over evaluate and over. Uh, uh, they reach. They yeah. They reach too much on these guys. Yeah, I agree. So so I. But next year's class, it's not that great. If if anything, the defense, the top end of the draft, it's gonna be mostly defense and offensive linemen. I think. Oh okay. Well, so so we're screwed for a couple of years then. Well, we're screwed at least for a quarterback. And, and the thing is, why do you really want to go through this all over again? If, if, you, if you have a ner- if you have mm. if you're gonna go through the fact that if Jalen Hurst isn't the answer and you want to draft a quarterback, you're gonna go through the same developmental process as you did with Jalen Hurst. So basically a whole so, new rebuild. So why not just stick with him? A guy that's on a rookie contract, a guy that you might be able to hopefully build around or maybe maybe uh, work with a little bit more or, yeah. try, or try to point out his flaws and work on those. But the, are but, we a quarterback factory, though? <laughs> we're I, a quarterback I, factory. I, I think sooner rather than later, <laughs> either, either – I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't I don't see the Eagles firing a head coach after one year. No. But if this continues to get bad, I if, mean it's really bad, it, yo. It, well, look, they played against the defending Super Bowl champs and lost by six points. Yeah, we could have we could have won that they, game. They, they 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 played well against the AFC champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, up to the fourth quarter. Oh yeah, then we got fucking our booties blown out. And the oh. uh the Carolina Panthers, they uh look. Sloppy first three quarters. It was an ugly win, but they came out as a complete team when the defense kept yeah. them in the game. Special teams were all ultimately, ultimately set them up for a big, big play, big play, and a big victory led by the offense. Big play so there's pieces on this team that we can really focus on that are some positives. But right. but look, we knew going to this season it this, was an evaluation. Absolutely, we knew that this team was not ready to compete as much as we are fans and wanted this team to win. Yeah. It no, was, you're absolutely right. It's not the case. And, and look, I know it's frustrating, but it's got to be a cuff ruffle, ru- uh, a rough, cuff ruffle. couple rough uh, seasons over the next few years, I believe. I, yeah, I believe. Uh, yeah, at least two seasons. It, ex- especially since the Dallas Cowboys, they look legit. Yeah, I told you. With, with, Dak, um, for, with Dak back, mm-hmm. they look like the cream of the crop in the NFC East and possibly, possibly the, the NFC. NFC. Yeah, yeah. The NFC, it depend- look, the Arizona Cardinals right now are playing far better than anyone right now. And honestly, Mm-hmm. They just got a whole lot better as there was a big trade today. A day after the Philadelphia Ooh. Eagles lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they trade longtime fan favorite tight end Zach Ertz to the Arizona Cardinals for a quarterback, Tay Gowan, Ooh. and a fifth-round pick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Peanut, your thoughts? Well, you had to get something for them, for uh, Ertz. You already knew Ertz wanted out. That's no secret. You know, everyone knew that. So um, how we got something out of it, we got basically two backups if you count the, the, the what is it, fifth round, sixth round? Fifth round. Fifth round. So basically we got a backup cor- cornerback and whatever backup rookie we're going to use. That on. Look, Zach wanted out, man. He wanted out. He played. Um, personally, I like the way Goddard <laughs> – I like the way Goddard's starting to progress, and I think by getting rid of Zach, now we can focus on Dallas Goddard. But, how, how has he progressed? He hasn't been on the field. Well, what I'm saying is when he's on the field, he, he, he's, no, he hasn't. He has been a giant disappointment. What? Why? Let me bring up his stats. 
He's, he, he, I, I like, I like, I like Goddard. Look, I think Goddard, can... Goddard has potential. There's no doubt about it, but he hasn't lived up to the hype of being that big play tight end, that vertical threat that we expected out of the guys like Travis Kelsey, right. uh, George Kittle, Kyle Pitts. Look, this season he has 15 receptions for 215 yards and two touchdowns. Those are not starting quality numbers through six games. Granted, he didn't play last night due to the COVID protocol. Right. But even last year, 2020, uh, 11 games, he, uh, 46 catches for 524 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, the year before, 600 yards, five touchdowns on uh, 58 carries on 15 in 15 games. Over the last two seasons, he has shown that he cannot stay healthy. Yeah. And stay on the field, which yeah. for a guy that's in a contract year, you you want to be on that field. You need to be on that field. You need to see the aggression, which I, they're gonna go. They're gonna resign him because there's no they're way they have to. There's no way in hell they're going to next year without Dallas Goddard on, uh, locked up long term. Yeah, they're gonna have to. But the the big thing is, Eagles fans are outraged, including uh, one of my co-hosts on the AET Birds Weekly Report. Chip, oh yeah, Chip, I've seen that. Chip, Chip is, is royally pissed He's off. Pissed. He kind of feels it was a little disservice to Zach Hurts. It was a little bit of a slap in the face for getting rid of an all-time great for this franchise. Yeah, a legend. For a fifth round in the cornerback. Pina, do you think he has a valid point? I think, hell yeah. I mean, look, as a fan, yeah, you, you, you look at it and you go, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But like I said earlier, like, look, the guy wanted out. He wanted out. He came back. He, he, he look, he, he was a good sport. He stuck it in there, and how he got something for him. It, like I said, it, it, I see Chip's Chip's point is is one hundred percent valid. But like I said, man, when these players don't want to play for a team, you, you got to get something for it. It just so happens we really got nothing for him. <laughs> well, look, I I think Zach want to stay here. I think after everything that they went through in the off season, and yeah. he he knew he was not getting a long-term contract. He wanted to stay in the city of Philadelphia, but yeah. ultimately the NFL is a business. Yeah. And look, we, 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 we kind of knew that this was possibly, uh, this was a possibility that they were going to move on from one of these tight ends, whether yeah. Dallas Goddard, they probably could have got more value for it, but with a team that is more in the rebuild and evaluation process of this organization, of this process, of course, they're going with the younger guy. And sure. look at the position that we are in. We are now two and four, two and four in a, a very crappy NFC East. But like we brought up a few moments ago, the Dallas Cowboys are showing to be a tremendous football team. They go up against the New England Patriots this week have, with a chance to go four and one yeah. to start the season. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, five, five and one. Five and one. Yeah. They're, I told you they're a problem. And Dak Prescott is a legit starting caliber franchise quarterback so so i feel if i feel the eagles are more in a contending mode we do not see this trade yeah. just because look zach Ertz last night with dallas got her out he showed it, he showed that he still has a little bit of stuff in the tank yeah he starts a little fuel uh the fact that he has, has a touchdown but you knew something was happening because zach Ertz, it was reported last night that zach Ertz was seen leaving the field crying <laughs> so sorry, I'm sorry. So I think he was told before that game, like, like look, this is, <laughs> this is your final game in the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Make it count. He's going to a good team, though. And that's the thing. Everyone's outraged. I was like, the Eagles did to him dirty. No, he's before. going to a great team, man. He's going to a, a lousy football team that's in rebuild to the only undefeated team in football yeah. with Kyler Murray, one of the best up-and-coming quarterbacks in the National Football League, yeah. with DeAndre Hopkins, a stellar yeah. defense. Look. The Arizona Cardinals have a chance to win the Super Bowl, in my opinion. They, they're agree. one of the surprising teams in the NFC a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everyone had the the Seattle uh, Seahawks or the Los Angeles Rams winning that division. Right now, Arizona is looking like a, a tremendous uh, a tremendous landing spot for Zach Ertz. And I, feel, yeah. I feel he can contribute. Yeah. So, of course, look, you're going from a lousy team to possibly winning a championship at the tail end of your career. So yeah. they did no disservice to Zach Ertz. Nah, as a matter of fact, they probably took the hit for Zach Ertz. You know what I mean? Like, look, Zach's not going to want to go to a – like, we could have sent him to a fucking dumpster fire. We didn't do that, so. We could. And uh, reportedly, there were offers on the table for Dallas Goddard, which the Eagles did turn down. So it just shows you that he is in their plans for He's the future. future. But look, and everyone's average, how can you only get that type of value for that value? You might as well keep him. Look, 
can't. We are not in a win now mode. We need to get as much assets as we can to try yeah. to build this ship from the ground up. Yeah. We need we weren't going to get a second or third round pick for a 30 plus year old tight end on the no. tail end of his career who has dropped tremendously in the amount of production. Yeah. Yesterday he had a great game. Yeah. But besides that, what has Zach Ertz really done? Last year was a complete disappointment. He was a complete mental case last year. The fact that he mentally couldn't stay stable to perform on that football field. Yeah. yeah he had he's... no trade value. You have to give Howie some type of credit for getting a depth piece along our cornerback, which our cornerback position, which is a complete disaster uh, outside the top two, top three. Yeah. And you get a fifth round pick. Yeah, you got something. You got something for nothing. I'll, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. And you release some of that salary to build towards the future. Because, yeah. of course, we keep on bringing up on this team with this team that we are completely in cap hell for probably the next couple of years unless they continue to push that money down the line which to extend will. it, which, which they, they, will, yeah. they already did with Fletcher Cox. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to keep doing that. But but everyone's like, well, Zach Hurts, they, they, it was a slap in the face because they didn't let Zach Hurts get the all-time uh, – Reception leader for Eagles in the Eagles franchise history. You think Zach Ertz really gives a fuck about that? He wants who, to win. Who fucking cares? Yeah. No, yeah. it's not that they didn't want Zach Ertz to win it. Maybe if he showed up last year, maybe if he showed up this earlier this season, yeah. maybe he would have broke the freaking record. Maybe if he wasn't fucking crying all the goddamn time. <laughs> no, and, and nothing in Zach Ertz. I'm kidding. Dude, he's been a tremendous talent. For this franchise, he's he's an all time great. Legend. He's a legend for this organization. There's Hell no yeah. doubting all of that. Nope. But you have to realize the NFL is a business, yep. and it doesn't last forever. To a lot, the Eagles, the one thing the Eagles do on a consistent basis, year in year out, is get rid of talent before, before. they before they start digressing and they get value for him, or they just uh, let him go. I mean, they they let Michael Jenkins go, which. He he didn't live up to his his uh, his uh, all pro status last mm, season for the no, Saints. No. Brian Dawkins, yeah, he had a he had a Pro Bowl season the year he left Philadelphia. But after that, you saw the decline. It was more, it was more of the the respect and the reputation factor I felt yeah. when it came to Brian Dawkins. He had a decent year that year, but yeah. what who else was really a quality safety that year that he left after he left Philadelphia? <laughs> Donovan McNabb. You saw how his career went. He's, yeah. a, he's an all-time Eagles great, but probably the best quarterback in franchise history right. to some. Exactly. But look, you got value for him. You got a second, third-round pick. I forget exactly what it was. Yep. Yeah, he beat this one game, but after that, he got he got he got after that kicked, nothing. He got kicked out of Washington. He went to Minnesota. And his career basically fizzled out. Yeah. So the Eagles organization, the one thing they do do well do is do. evaluate talent of their own roster and know when it's time to move on. Right, except for Brain and Graham, Fletcher Cox. Ugh. Well, and uh, you know, I mean, it, look, so, some of those I feel we can that. get value for. The, that's the problem, though. Sometimes we wait to the bitter end, and then we try to this. Hence, Zach Ertz. Now, if we would pull triggers a little sooner, we would get more out of it. No, well, no one's gonna pay. No one's gonna give us anything for these Asian agent agent players. You know what I'm saying? On a decline. Well, they're not going to do it for every single position. And honestly, no one expected the downward spiral that is the Philadelphia Eagles franchise last season yeah. by losing your Super Bowl winning head coach, mm -hmm. by getting rid of your franchise quarterback, yeah. who has been a major bust for the most part this season. Besides last Monday night, that 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 ten, or that Monday night football game against the Baltimore Ravens, yeah, oh, they, they ended Christ, up yeah. losing. But you have to blame Frank Wright on that. Oh, yeah. He let his foot off the gas on that one and allowed yeah. the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson to yeah. come back in that football game, gave him too much time on the clock, and ultimately losing in overtime, plus the kicker. Yeah. You can't blame Carson Wentz for leading a fourth quarter potentially game-winning drive and having your kicker miss his Punk. second field goal in like four minutes. You have one job, bro. You have one. You're fired. And, and, and that's the reason why a lot of players don't consider kickers actually NFL athletes. I, I do. You know what? The pressure is on. The pressure, pressure is, is on. on. Like that, that, it's the most pressure filled. Here, basically, even even extra points. You know what I'm saying? Like, but now they extended. It I back. salute you, kickers, man. Kick that shit, son. <laughs> but look, it's Zach a tough Hurts, job. You'll be missed. Yeah, you will be. Eventually, you'll re once you retire, you'll come back. You'll be put in the Eagles uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, you'll. I don't think he's not he's not a Hall of Famer in the NFL, but he's been a quality tight end in this league. He's all, ultimately a franchise great, 
and we we appreciate all that you've done for this organization, also helping us win our first and only Super Bowl. So. Absolutely. So, of course, we wish so you the best. Was- and look, he's a class act. He, he, is. he, oh, he is. After being traded, after all this, yeah. he still spoke to the Philadelphia media. He still yeah. relayed his message to the Eagles fan base for all the love and that this Philadelphia will always be his home. Yeah. And the fact that he's a class guy – didn't go out there and bash the organization, didn't bash management for everything that happened last offseason and last year by not giving him a contract. He still says he's going to be the Eagles' biggest fan from afar. Good. So he's ultimately, even though he's in the conference, he right. still wants this organization, he still wants his teammates, he still wants this team to succeed, and ultimately he wants them to win. Look, I don't blame him. Go get your money, Zach, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? If the, the Arizona Cardinals want to give you that money, then go get it. You deserve it. You 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 brought us the championship, you know what I'm saying, with uh, uh, Doug and our the number one quarterback of all time, Nick Foles. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, no. You're the one coughing up along now. I know, man, but I'm a smoker. <laughs> What's your excuse? <laughs> Doesn't make much better, but look. Yeah, man. It's been a rough week. The Eagles get 10 extra, or they get a couple extra days now, 10 days away from traveling to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders, which that, that team's a dumpster fire right now. Yo, they, the, tell fact, me. the fact that John Gruden wow. got canned after those more emails got uh, got link, uh, leaked out yeah. to the New York Times, there was no coming back from that. Mm-mm. For a team that looked like a possible uh, dude, yeah. pl- a playoff contender to lose their head coach, and now they're basically wow. in, in complete complete drama with that organization right now. <laughs> I don't know how they're coming back from that. They're not. They're not going to come back. From so, that. so the the Eagles somewhat catch a little bit of a break. The fact that now the uh, offensive coordinator, I believe, is the new interim head coach. As I don't know if they're going to hire one this year or they're just going to wait till the off season, but. Look, they still have to play some football. They're still a decent football team. Uh, they have Derek Carr. They have Josh Jacobs. So uh, they, they have a decent defense. They're, yeah. they're definitely a decent team in the AFC and on the road in that stadium. That's a winnable game. It's a winnable game, but it's it's not going to be easy. And that's the none th- of these games have been easy. <laughs> well, and well, that's the, that's the thing. We, that's thing I was going to bring up. Damn, well, man, these games have been fucking grueling to fucking watch. It's, well, not just not the games in the past. Granted, look. We played against the Super Bowl champions. We played against the AFC champions. Right. We played against a decent Carolina Panthers team that was undefeated uh, the week before, before losing to Dallas with Sam Darnold basically rejuvenating his career. Uh, yeah. So down the stretch, it doesn't get it doesn't get much easier as we get into the <laughs> deeper end of the schedule. They have the Raiders uh, Sunday, October twenty fourth. Uh, mm-hmm. On Halloween, they go on the road to face the Lions, which are O five team, but still on the road. Uh, back to back weeks. Uh, come back that, home. That's a game we should fucking win right there. You you hope. Yeah. But nothing in the in the NFL is winnable these no. days, <laughs> especially when you're the Eagles. <laughs> exactly. They come back home. Uh, they face Justin Herbert and the Chargers, which that's they're, a loss. They, they're a deadly football team right now on the road against the Broncos. I know everyone wants to criticize the Broncos' record, how they haven't really beaten anyone. Right. But still. Mile High is a tough place to play. They're, they're still they're still a quality football team minus yeah. the quarterback position, which Teddy Bridgewater has shown that he 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 he, he has a, he has a little bit left in the tank. He's uh he's he's playing pretty well for the most part. Yeah, so yeah. the Bron- the Broncos ain't a, a guaranteed win. No, the Saints at home. Then you come on the road against the Giants on Sunday night or on not Sunday night football. I thought that was Sunday night, but either either way. Yeah. Look, until that Giants game, which that's still not a win. It's mm. it's still against an NFC East opponent, a team that we that, play hard. that beat us last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So look, it, it, it's it's only getting worse as an Eagles fan. As much as this pains me to say, along I just hope we're competitive. Yeah. But we might be starting looking towards that draft. It's time to get the, it's time to get Johnny's draft evaluation. Yeah, I was gonna say soon. we need to get Johnny on here so you, Midway through the season, start going through like, "Hey, who, who, who should they get? <laughs> we suck." Look, I, I, it's the growing pains of a new coach, new system, new everything. It, we knew it was coming, man. I, I, you know, we just didn't think it was gonna be this bad. It, it hasn't been horrible. Like, I mean, it hasn't been great. We but, are blocked. We are a block punt uh, away from being one and five right now. I know, I know, but we should have expected that, man. 
Like not no, this bad. <laughs> not this bad. Nick Sirianni is no like. Look, he's got a. You know what? He needs to start learning how to adjust too. Like if something don't work, dude, like let, let's <laughs> move on. Like if the bubble screen after the fifteen time don't work, man, let's just try something different. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's do something different. Let's run a different scheme. We look predictable. We look lackey daisy. We look. We look basically like a cookie cutter of the. Every game is a cookie cutter. Uh. Uh, of plays we're doing the same thing over and over again and it's like look sometimes it works but i, I get it i get it man i get it but it's 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 depressing it is extremely depressing and as eagles fans we don't like this what no <laughs> granted, no no team no fan base wants to deal, deal with losing especially but, us but philadelphia we don't like dealing this for long we, it better mm. be a quick turnaround. We understand this year it's probably already chalked up as a loss. You get one year, they, bro. They need to f- turn this ship around. They, they need to start building this franchise from the bottom up yeah. and f- finally trying to put some talent so we can start trying to win football games I think again. that's the biggest problem is, is is the talent. We need the talent. Look, whatever whatever Gannon's got going on, give him his guys. You know, this is the first year. Basically, he's thrown into the to the water. Let's But, look. but the thing is, I, I, don't, I don't think it really matters. Look at look at look at Schwartz all those years. Schwartz kept on saying, "Get me this guy. <sighs> yeah. Bring me this guy. I want him. I want that guy." Yeah. Especially in the draft. Yeah. And Howie and the scouting department, they didn't listen. Yeah. That's true. So what what what's much difference between Schwartz and Gannon? Everyone's like, well, if we're if he's if Gannon's playing that bad, what, we're better off keeping Jim Schwartz. Not the case. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Jim Schwartz was a senile old man who did not adjust <laughs> and was too, that old man. and was too stubborn to adjust. The fact that he played sticks defense yeah. so often, and granted, the Eagles defense is you. If you look at this coverage. Yeah, yeah they're playing off. Because we don't have the safety help. We're mm. not getting the pass rush on the quarterback. And and, and look, John DeGannon only could do so much. Right. Until we get quality players on that team, the blame ultimately is on him. He only could do so much with this team and with the players he has at his disposal. I agree. And it, it, I agree. It, it, it's a long season, fellas. We're six <laughs> games in. We have 11 more to go. It's gonna be a bumpy ride, y'all. You, dude, you might you might be done by week by week eight. Your, your wife, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> yeah, your, 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 your wife, she's not gonna let you watch football on Sundays anymore. I'm gonna soon. have to record that shit, watch that shit when she falls asleep. Pretty freaking much because this team is <laughs> embarrassing right well, now. Well, the last game, the Carolina game, I recorded. I I couldn't watch it live, and <laughs> everyone's texting me. I'm like, no, stop, stop. But yeah, now nah, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Look, I kind of expected this. It sucks to go through it. The process sucks. You know what I'm saying? But we we have to like we have to temper our expectations when it comes to this season. Like, look, as long as we as long as we're seeing positives and 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 and, and growth the on these some some of these players, like Devontae Smith looks like a sure sure shot. That was a that was a great pick. You know what I'm right saying? For right now. For right now. For right now. Um yeah, two catches for 31 yards. But that's day. not his fault. I'm telling you, the guy, he's open. Like, th- this guy's open more than he's getting. The problem is, is the pressure on the quarterback, and the quarterback only literally. Oh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying it's Devontae. You know I'm, I'm not saying it's Devontae, but. So. But there, I feel there's a lot more negatives than there are positives. There's and, a lot more negatives. And, and that's what gets you frustrated. It's not so much the outcome of these games. Yeah. We, we want competitive football games. We want to see production. We want to see growth. Yeah. Which we're not seeing, especially in the most important position in the National Football League, which is the quarterback position, and, yes, and that's sir. what is upsetting <laughs> the fans. That is what uh, that's what it's upsetting this fan base. Good. The fact that you're not seeing growth from this supposedly your franchise quarterback and Jalen Hurts, you're not seeing in-game adjustments or growth and too much stubbornness from your head coach Nick Sirianni. Yes, sir. Those are two major components that you do not want to see from the uh, uh from your team as a fan base yeah I agree. And, and that's the most frustrating part and that's why fans are getting are beating on this team and harping on them because yeah losing games is okay not okay <laughs> but we can accept it as long as we played our we played all out and our game plan and uh execution was there which sure. you have to give this team credit they have heart they do have heart. They came back from 14 points down. They'll lose by six points. They had a chance to win the game. And that that's what's that's what the sour taste in your mouth is. A lot of these games, they had chances. But that's what separates good teams from great teams. It, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Well, good or and bad. Bad teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, this we're a bad football team. <laughs> we a bad football team. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Um, I don't any optimism at all? Not this year. I mean, I mean it, 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 as a whole. 
it's still too early to say. I won't give a full season, but right now through six games, Sirianni hasn't shown me too much <laughs> that he can adjust. I Jalen agree. Hurts has been way too inconsistent to really – to give the key to this franchise to be your franchise quarterback, in my opinion. If I was the owner, I would not. Hell, you you, you have a quarter, you have a running back with Miles Sanders who you don't even use. If I was Miles, yeah. I'd be asked, I'd be asking to be traded. You had you have a rookie wide receiver who, after the game, was freaking shrugging. Even you can hear his mouth uh, read lips saying, "We need the, we should have ran the ball." Yeah. If your star wide receiver who that position are prima donnas who <laughs> want the ball in their hands all the goddamn time. If yeah. he is saying run the ball, <laughs> Nick Sirianni, newsflash, listen to your fucking players. If they are saying we need to run the ball more, and the fact that Jalen Hurts isn't under center, I think he was under yeah, center I, maybe once or twice yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. That's a really good point. What? What? You're not even showing that you're committed to running the football. You're not. <laughs> you're not showing any type of commitment. That you're willing to change your scheme. Yeah. Basically, in your in your eyes, if it doesn't work, just keep on trying. Just keep on trying. Just keep on trying until Bubble it does work. Gonna work one time. It's, it's not going to work against these against quality NFL caliber defenses. I agree. I 100 percent agree. It's frustrating, man. It is. The frustration is real. And the frustration it, is real. Look, we have a short life. You, you, don't, you, <laughs> you don't want you don't want to continue to go. You only have football for 16, 17 weeks. Yeah. Look, it took. 27 years for them to win a Super Bowl in my lifetime? Yeah, pretty much. I don't want to wait another 27 years. You only have 16 games, and this season's already shot. But it looks I, like I, we're going to have to wait a long we're have to wait, time. We're going to have to wait at least another year to have some type of little op uh, optimism. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm half dead. <laughs> Ah, he said I'm half dead. <laughs> at least my, at least the problem in my life is half dead. Damn, damn. So damn. sorry, Sirianni, Lurry, H Roseman. Hop on that shit, son. Give me another championship before I fucking die. <laughs> With that being said. Yeah, we're getting the hell out of here. We like to thank our sponsors. Uh, thank you to Statement Games. Uh, fun free twist on fantasy sports. Uh, make sure to check them out. You have a chance to win some gift cards, other great prizes. Check them out at statementgames.com. The referral link is in the description of the program. Word. Uh, I'd like to thank oddsjam.com using their arbitrage calculator to not lose money. Uh, they are a great fantasy site, more hardcore. Uh, so if you are big in the fantasy, uh, big in the gambling, and don't want to risk losing money, make sure to check them out. Again, the referral link is in the description of this episode as well. Uh, make sure you check out uh, that's no longer atbirds.com. I do need to switch that, but you can <laughs> still use that. It'll redirect you to the new link, which is aatsportsnetwork.com backslash shop. Uh, check out the website with a lot of great designs, a lot of new designs that Johnny just put out, as well as the birds, beards, and BS uh, designs. We have Hell t-shirts, yeah. we have hats, uh, we have masks, we have koozies, we have shirts for kids, babies. We have it all. Make sure to check it out. There's always a great sale going on, so make sure to check it out. Help support us. Please. Uh, it really does go a long way. Uh, I'd like to th uh, thank our friends at 99jersey.com. Uh, use our code ATBIRDS20 for a 20% discount at checkout. Again, ATBIRDS20 for 20% off. A lot of kick-ass jerseys uh, from your favorite sports stars and movies, uh, movie characters uh, in the world of sports. So make sure to check them out. Uh, also like to thank our friends at Manscaped. Use code ATBIRDS for 20% off and free shipping at checkout at manscaped.com. Again, ATBIRDS for 20% off and free shipping at checkout at manscaped.com. And also, again, like to thank our great sponsor here on the Birds, Beers, and BS crew, uh, our friends at Vinny's Pizza and Restaurant. Vinny's Pizza is located off Iroquois Trail in the Old Town Shopping Center in Allentown. Open Monday through Saturday, serving you their delicious Italian cuisine that includes pizza pizza, pasta, sandwiches, and more. Go Check out their daily uh, daily and game day specials today. Uh, they are available for pickup or delivery. You can order today by calling 610-395-2300. Again, 610-395-2300 or visit Vinny'sPizzaPA.com. Uh, no show next week. I will be down south in the crappy state of Texas, so I do <laughs> apologize. Uh, we will not have a show next week. We should be back the following week with dissecting yep. more on the Philadelphia Eagles and hopefully, hopefully a little bit more optimism here on the show uh, next or next program. 
Uh, make sure to check out all our programs on the AT Sports Network. Uh, we have Chips and Dish on Monday. We have Burning Bridges on Tuesday with former NFL player Jeremy Bridges. The AT Birds Weekly Report on Wednesdays, typically Thursdays. We do have uh, uh, Across the Pitch or uh, ba uh, Barrera's Baskets, a new college football show, which is also on our YouTube channel and our uh, uh, podcasting channel, wherever you can get your podcasts on, on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Anchor, all those sites, you can check out that as well. Yes, Fridays, we're typically uh, here on the Birds, Beers, and BS, which is a YouTube exclusive. So, again, make sure you're hitting that like button, follow button, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment, tell us what you think of the program, tell if you disagree, agree. We love hearing feedback from all our uh, valid listeners Absolutely. and our uh, great followers here on Birds, Beers, and BS and the AT Sports Network. Yes, sir. So, again, thank you for everyone for tuning in. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. I am your host, Eagle Jeff Warner at Jeff Warner NFL. Peanut, my compadre here. You can follow him on Twitter at Party Doll Dave One, which he's been tweeting I'm a little bit to more. Tweet now. He's tweeting I'm a little bit. To tweet so, now. so give him a little love. Give him a follow <laughs> there on the, on the Twitterverse. So, again, thank you for everyone for tuning in. Uh, have a great weekend. Have a great week. Uh, hopefully, we talk about Eagles victory in a couple weeks. So, as we say here on Birds, Beers, and BS, drink, drink them if you got them. Attention, listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston, do we have a pew problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the performance package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job from the leaders in male grooming. Join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code AATBIRDS. Ready for an out of world experience, fellas? Look no further than the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped that has just taken off in not only the USA, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your whole solar system. First, scheduled for liftoff, new Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer. This spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even Uranus. This fourth generation trimmer also features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multifunction on off switch, can engage a travel lock, and is even waterproof. The Lawnmower 4.0 also has a 4000K LED spotlight you can turn on and off when needed for a more precise shave throughout your travels across the universe. The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker. It's like having a little astronaut to chop your worst weeds up top in your nose and ear. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual-blade system. This nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Don't forget to use Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and their Crop Reviver to help your little planets be on their A-game while feeling the sun's heat. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Abort hairy balls and buzz lightyear that woody with Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code AATBIRDS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code AATBIRDS at manscaped.com. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you.